All right, welcome back, guys. Sorry it's been so long. I've just been helping my dad build. We're building a gate because we've had a lot of intruders recently come onto our property and we don't have a gate, so they just come freely and then they've just been saying things like, oh, we're looking for our missing dog. Uh, have you seen him in the area when in reality we've never seen this person or this type of family um, in the vicinity. So things have been getting really serious around here that we had to lock up the place. But anyway, before I get into the topic that I want to talk about today, one life lesson is do not eat your food really fast or else you end up with some sort of like digestional blockage. I ate my food today way, 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 way too fast. And now I'm drinking some hot tea, trying to soothe my stomach because it's like clogged up or something. But anyway, right back into the video. Today's topic that I wanted to talk to you guys about was um, gratification and specifically being grateful for your health. Um, I thought about this topic Literally last night as I was, uh, I woke up like in the middle of the night and just started thinking to myself, so many people have been given the gift of being healthy. They have a healthy mind, they have a healthy body, they have a healthy soul, and they do things purposefully to their body to make themselves unhealthy. You know, they drink to ruin their body, they smoke to ruin their lungs, they take all these other substances just to mess with their mind when in reality they have a perfectly good healthy mind. And then people on the other hand of the spectrum, the ones that are unhealthy, the ones that have been, I don't know, born with a genetic disability or born with something that they can't control, only wish to have the health of the people that ironically are destroying their health. So see how funny that is? And we don't tend to realize, like the saying goes, what we have until it's gone. And the people that are destroying their health when they're perfectly healthy, when that sickness or when that problem arises, they think to themselves, Oh shit, what did I do to myself? Why am I why am I feeling like this? They get some sort of like stomach issues or ironically me eating too fast. Anyway, they get some sort of issues, health issues and they think to themselves, "Okay, you know what? Maybe maybe now it's time to uh change my lifestyle. Something severely has to happen to you, really? Something severe that bad?" has to happen to you for you to rethink your decisions. That's exactly why I'm making this video today is so that this may be your severity that happens in life. You need to prioritize your health. You need to prioritize eating healthy, putting liquids into your body that are not full of sugar, but rather whatever, black coffee, if you want like zero calorie um, almond milk, that's a pretty good additive to it. Some monk fruit, uh, which I've been doing research on, is actually pretty good for you. Zero calories and it's like a one-to-one -one, um, uh, replacement for sugar. You know, cut out the sodas. If you're going to drink soda, drink diet with zero calories. Um, cut out all those shakes, energy drinks are just purely awful for you. Like take care of your heart as well. Like don't unnecessarily be speeding up your heart unless it's for something physical. Like so many people are just going to be like chilling, watching a movie, drinking a Red Bull. Oh yeah, this is awesome. Like what? You why do you need to stay awake for that? Just go to bed. Or 
Or some people are just like, oh, I need to relax. It's been such a hard, stressful day at work. Let me just down a six pack of beer. Like, okay, I understand, like, life's tough and you might have had a shitty week or something, but just just take it as it is. Like, it's 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 not going to take away the the fact that you had a shitty week or your 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 stress levels are pretty high. Deal with it like a man and and take it as it is. Like nothing is going to change differently if you just down that six pack upset that you you've harmed yourself more now. It's easy to take your health for granted when you're healthy. But if you are in a severe health disability, you would understand how much more you need to be making sure of, of what you're putting into your body is only the highest of quality things. And what you do to your body on a day-to-day -day basis is only the highest quality thing. And the same thing goes for your thoughts. A lot of people's thought patterns are so negative and only when they come to self-awareness and they realize, oh my gosh, I'm like, like, why am I so stressed always? Like, I want to take care of the stress or I'm so sad all the time. I need to get rid of all the sadness or I don't know another negative emotion, but those are just emotions. Like emotions aren't necessarily negative and positive. It's just like how we act on them uh, makes them negative and positives. I think emotions are neutral per se. Uh, have, meaning every emotion. Oh my God! It's a fucking massive spider. It's the perks of living on the country. All emotions are neutral per se. It's just the situations and how we respond to them make them uh, positive or negative. But anyway, if you let things go too far one way, then. It has to be that something in your life has to happen for you to realize, okay, I need to take a break. Like a lot of people will quit cigarettes or quit smoking, like vaping or stuff. I've seen on like a lot of people's TikTok pages when they end up in the hospital and then they post a picture of themselves on ventilators saying, oh my gosh, guys, quit vaping. This wasn't worth it. And kudos for them for now they, they quit. But a lot of people, they see this and they're like, oh, you know what, my health is fine. I don't need to quit. Yeah, your health might be fine now. You might be okay now. But where is that going to lead you to? To the exact same place where that other person is being led to. Yes, some people smoke cigarettes until they're 110 and are fine. But those are the rare case. What are the odds do you want to gamble with your life like that? That you are the rare case that you will make it to 110 years old and have perfectly fine lungs? Those are some next superhuman grannies. Because most of the time, other than the people that are here are like grandmas that live to that long who smoke cigarettes. All the guys that smoke cigarettes, it's like you're maxing out at 85, buddy. Like don't, don't push your luck too much. I guess women just deal with stress better or I don't know. It's just the stress that kills you. But anyway, the whole point of this spiel is if I was to tell myself what not to do is I always thought to myself, ah, I'm young, I'm indestructible, I can take on so much, I can take on so much alcohol without waking up with a hangover. I could take on so much weed without feeling like I'm going to be destroying my brain cells. I can take so much vaping and my lungs are just bulletproof. Like I've built the tolerance of a kickboxer like Andrew Tate who smokes whatever 30,000 cigars a day and still works fine. I beg you to try this one experiment on yourself. If you do struggle, let's say for example, like if you smoke, smoke whatever, smoke weed, 
smoke, uh, cigarettes, vape, hop on the cardio machine for 30 minutes to an hour and like really push yourself like keep your heart rate at like 130 plus like right after you like take a break or that day uh, you wake up you're you're still smoking your cigarettes or whatnot hop on the cardio machine for an hour see how you feel you're gonna most likely feel like you're gonna die because it's gonna be so much pressure on your lungs and if you do already do cardio good for you just do it anyway because there's more there's a there's a bigger point to this now if your puny mind can handle it stop for at least like three days do cardio consistently on those three days and journal and see and compare yourself how you felt on that first day prior to quitting your cardio levels, how your heart feels, how your lung feels, how you can breathe versus how you feel on that third day. See how much more air you can take into your body. See how much longer you can breathe at a higher heart rate for you'll actually be surprised with yourself and you'll notice that holy shit my body is capable of so much more don't ask me how i know because i'll tell you the truth i've i've tested this myself and you will understand that your body if the only thing that goes into your lungs is air then you are able to push your body and use your body to the limits that it can actually be used for. This is all I'm trying to tell you guys. This is, I'm trying to help you reach your full potentials and reach the limits that your body is capable at functioning. And being 50 pounds overweight, drinking every night, smoking until your brain goes numb is not how you live at your full potential. How you live at your full potential is eat, eating clean 80 to 90% of the time. Drinking water, coffee, tea, or black coffee. Inhaling only air. I'm pretty sure I just said that, but I don't remember now. I'm blanking. Cutting out complaining, because complaining and negative vibes and talking poorly about yourself doesn't matter about yourself your others or future events past events is just going to bring yourself into negative vibration and lack of movement i can't stress this enough lack of movement is something that we all take advantage of and it's like health it's like um, like drinking too m or smoking too much. Sorry, you think you're bulletproof until until one day you wake up and it's it's almost impossible to breathe. It's the same thing with movement. You've been given your legs to move, walk. You know, take the harder path. Walk the stairs instead of taking the elevator. Park a little bit further. Enjoy that walk to the grocery store if you can skateboard to a friend's house if you can bike bike to a friend's house or bike around with your wife do more movements because we live in an era where everything is seated i'm sitting down i wish i was honestly i i was a, a part of a, a a a meeting and there was a bunch of like uh high high performing guys in this meeting and the one guy that was running this this meeting Everybody was sitting at their desk, but this guy just gave me so much inspiration. He was running this meeting on a treadmill. And he was doing the meeting, multitasking, on the treadmill or whatever this walking thing was. Anyway, he was walking while he was on the meeting and talking to everybody. I was just like blown away. I was like, holy shit, I need to do that. I need to start doing that. I need to take all my meetings walking and I need to walk as much as possible. Sorry, move as much as possible because we sit so much. We sit in our cars, we sit while we're chilling, we sit while we eat, we sit while we talk, we sit while we work. 
you're sitting so much and your body wasn't meant to do all this sitting and then one day you're gonna wake up with like lower back pain or your, your legs are having trouble moving because you haven't been using them you lose what you don't use you lose your good pair of lungs if you don't use them and fill them with bad shit. You lose your muscles in your brain, in your body, in your bicep, legs, whatever, if you don't use them and you sit all day. You lose your six pack if you feed it with chips, chocolates, and garbage all day. It's a simple theory I don't know if theory is the right word to use, but it's factual. Please take this away. You lose what you don't use. Don't take what you have that's working for you now for granted. If you have healthy legs, walk more. If you have a healthy heart, use it. Exercise. Everybody has a six-pack under their flubber. Everybody should reveal it in their lifetime at least once. Because if you reveal it at least once, you're not going to want to go back. You're going to be so proud of yourself and you're like, okay, I put in the effort. I see this. I feel so much more confident. I don't care what anybody thinks of me because I'm not insecure to take off my shirt at the beach and show my 600 pound belly because you're a nice chiseled sculpted being like God designed you and yeah so I hope you guys got a lot of value from this video I hope you're having an amazing day subscribe if you're new um, check out the links I'm going to be coming out with a newsletter very shortly. Um, well, I already have one. It's just kind of in the works of becoming better. Uh, and I hope you guys are doing amazing. Remember, stay pro positive. Create more than you consume. Serve others and love everybody. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.